Good morning, everyone. Today, many shops will open for the first time since lockdown began some three months ago. But despite the very real challenges for us all in being confined to our homes of not being able to see our loved ones, there have been some pluses. And one is that our environment is in better shape now than it was three months ago. Our factories have not burned, aircraft have not flown, and our ecosystem has benefited. And last week, we, plas we passed a historic milestone. Britain has now completed two months without burning coal to generate electricity. This is a remarkable, almost unimaginable feat. A decade ago, 40% of the country's electricity came from coal and just 3% of the country's electricity came from wind and solar power, which at the time many people saw as a costly distraction. But as we went into lockdown, the demand for electricity fell dramatically, and the UK has not used coal to generate electricity for two whole months. And at the moment, renewables have been responsible for 37% of our power, and 35% from fossil fuels. And it's the first time this year that those two have um, outweighed each other. And this is the beginning of what we all want to happen, for the UK and the world to invest in renewable energy so that when we come completely out of the pandemic and as we ease out of lockdown, that emissions fall globally of carbon dioxide and that pollution levels fall. And we need to sustain this every year, year on year. We have shown the power of acting together during lo lockdown. Our individual efforts of washing our hands and staying at home may not have always seemed significant, but acting together, the effect has been huge. And so it is with our use of energy by investing in low energy light bulbs by by switching to hybrid or electric cars or if we have petrol cars by by making decisions to reduce the number of our journeys all these individual choices count and this is the challenge for us all as our manufacturing industries and our businesses begin to fire up again do we do we just revert to the way we were before if the pandemic has taught us one thing, it is that we, as a global society, were not sufficiently attuned to ourselves, to our environment, to our ecosystem. There is a price to pay for ignoring nature, for driving forwards with man-made systems. Now, for the first time, the UK is hosting what's called COP26 next year in Glasgow. That's the 26th UN Climate Change Conference of the Parties, or COP26. And COP26 is something that we're going to hear a lot about in the next year, as it brings together parties, um, some 30,000 delegates, including heads of state, climate experts and campaigners, to agree coordinated action to tackle climate change. And the plan is for everyone, for all countries, to have a green recovery plan. And for its part, the UK government has pledged to close all coal-powered energy generation sites by 2024. So this is a good step forward. There is, there is of course, a human cost for those communities, those mining communities, and we should not be blind to this. And it is a human cost that we must be sensitive to. But the point is, enormous change can happen if we all care enough about it. And if, through our vote, we can pressure governments to act in our name. Two summers ago, I was in Central America, in Costa Rica, one of the most beautiful countries I've ever visited. The sheer determination in Costa Rica to create its energy through renewable power is, is breathtaking. Um, and in driving through the countryside, side, the, um, the sight of huge wind machines whirring is one of the most compelling memories I have of that country. 
almost 100% of that country's electrical energy is derived from renewable energy sources. It's an awe-inducing achievement, and we should all be lauding Costa Rica's example. And wouldn't it be wonderful if we could say the same about the UK, to be a world leader in this area? And again, I turn to you children, you future scientists and researchers and campaigners, to lead the way. I'm delighted by how many of you are already environmental campaigners. I know how many of you are passionate about it. And indeed, one of our year twos has already written to and met his local MP to make his concerns known. And that's more impressive than any mark you could score in an exam. This is the power of your conscience and your determination to do what is right in order to secure the future you want for your own children and indeed for your children's children. Have a good day, everyone.